Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this um, uh, event, uh, this uh, conference, which make us just remember a long time with our colleagues from all over the world. Oh, my talk will be in dental identification possibilities in the absence of dental records. Actually, it's just a kind of sharing of what we have here in Sudan. Maybe we start this before talking about the current situation and the background relating the disasters that happen here. We have estimated of civilian airplane crashes. In the last 20 years, it's not less than 13, might be more. Uh, many deaths without a system for DVI identification. Uh, it might be related to the to the communities and to the way they live and uh, to the interest itself and some religious background that make them deal with the things like they just bury the bodies without going for more identifications. Also, there is an estimate of many air crashes of uh, military airplanes, especially we were in the war, in war in the last uh, maybe 25 or 30 years. Uh, and all the time we lost people without getting any kind of uh, identification process. Sometimes they use DNA, but uh, it's not uh, that organized. And then uh, when we come to the missing person issue, we found that uh, between Sudan and South Sudan, the two countries, during the war, we have like uh, estimate of 400,000 missing persons. In Darfur, uh, during the era of war, we have estimated of 100,000 missing persons. And uh, recently, in the 3rd of June, mass here in Khartoum in 2019, we faced it in the, in the, in, in, in the middle of uh, Khartoum, where the capital, we missed like 100, uh, at least 100 persons are missing. Those are who are known with the families. Some people are missing and we don't know about them. Uh, these, all these, uh, all these accidents make people uh, step back to look for what we need about this. We have the issue of human trafficking, refugees, informed disappearance, human slavery, mass graves. When we looked at the reports that had been about Sudan and uh, the missing person that we found in the deserts in the east or in the, uh, in the borders with Libya, especially for those who are uh, going for immigration, we usually, uh, annually, we have like 3,000 uh, missing uh, bodies found at that area, and they just bury them also. They don't deal with them uh, at a right, you know, with right protocols or right standards. Recently, we start, or even the community itself, they start to acknowledge this problem, and they, when they start to look at the missing person problem, and uh, when we look at the identification process in the mortuaries in Sudan before, they always doing photography by the forensic uh, evidence department in the police and then fingerprints, if possible, autopsy uh, to, 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 to clarify the cause of this. And then they take a DNA reference sample. This method is not that uh, efficient because Sometimes if you have uh, a decomposed uh, bodies or a skeletalized body, you can compare with the faces. And uh, now we have like more than, for example, now in Khartoum, we have more than five or 6,000 missing reports of our families for, of, of missing persons. So you can do DNA for all those families uh, when you compare them with those, those unidentified bodies inside the mortuaries. So this is the process we deal with in the last 20 years in Sudan. But actually, it's rare to get any kind of results to find missing person. And then after uh, the capacity of the mortuary become full, they just burying them in groups which even don't follow the international standards in burying those missing persons. Uh, the limitation uh, had, had for these methods, the decomposed body, where they, they can't, uh, uh, the families can't recognize uh, their beloved person, Minister of Interior System limitation, even when they took the fingerprints, they don't have access uh, to the civil, civil authority, so they can't check with the system of the IDs and that issue also uh, the missing persons family awareness 
is not that much. It's still, we have uh, in some areas outside Khartoum, when you miss some body, you just uh, say in, in our language, just keep him to Allah, to God, and God will save him. If he's not coming, they just take him as a dead person without trying to go for police and go for searching and do whatever. Uh, the comparison process on that system, it's very difficult because if we look at that uh, process, we found that the families just come and ask for the for some somebody who is missing, for example, for two months or three months. And when they go to detect with uh, the forensic evidence departments, they look to a photos of some people who found during this period. And if that body is, is scrutinized, it's difficult, uh, or even it's, uh, it, it's decomposed, sorry, it's difficult to, to, to know uh, the body from the face. And uh, usually we missed many people, uh, they missed the identification because of that. Uh, exhumation of the body also is a kind of problem because if even after they buried the bodies, and you go and check with DNA and get a positive result to take out the body from all from these mass graves. It's very difficult, especially they they put all of them together. All of these things and situation, uh, it's real uh, headache and it's real challenge for us. That how can we deal of it before we have a lack of forensic odontology services? But actually, when it's, whenever when it starts, the challenges start with it with the policymakers to just to convince them that there's uh, a part of uh, forensic uh, uh, part like forensic odontology can use in identification and we can apply some of the uh, protocols. It's, it's, it's too difficult and it needs time. Forensic medicine sector itself, it's here in Sudan, it's very difficult to communicate with them. We always have a kind of, I don't know, is a kind of problems you can say or kind of um, uh, um, we are not so homogeneous together, but I think it's uh, I, it's maybe to the lack of uh, of them, the lack of the importance of forensic odontology. Legal system is itself didn't lodge uh, a space for forensic odontology and identification process to be part of it. The community acceptance that they can wait to for you to search and whatever and give you information, uh, they didn't accept it very uh, very easy. A lack of dental record system is the real problem that we have here in Sudan. And uh, we don't have a system that to compare with. So to find a solution, it's really a, a, a difficult problem for us and we live with it. But a piece of light come to our minds when we, based on the fact that these are very unique, uh, we consider the morphology of the teeth and the method of link for identification or sometimes at the identification itself and that might solve the mystery of unidentified bodies. When we think this way, uh, we're doing this and we still enhance the health authorities to establish dental record system that we can come uh, and take us to the standard methods of doing the identification and with the increase of social media application and get more popularities, same Sudan here at the world outside, starting with the Facebook, with the Instagram and people always share the photos I start to think about myself. If I look to my teeth here, and my teeth here also, uh, is it easy to be recognized? Is it easy uh, if, 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 if uh, with this traditional clothes, I'm, al I'm alive and this here, I'm dead. Is it easy to compare, uh, especially uh, due to situations? So we think about how can we make it easy, especially with a situation like this? Sorry for the, the photo. But this is the situation we have now. We have mortuaries with more capacity for, which is capacity is also all the mortuaries here in Sudan, like 200 or 250 uh, cadavers. And this is one of the mortuary with, with more of its capacity with this and human, and, and with this uh, scene, this is, un, uh, it's really unhumanity, unhuman. And it's difficult to deal with such kind of situation. And you can expect uh, the decomposition of these bodies, sometimes you will you find the teeth out of the sockets, you find many problems and we need to deal with one, one, more than 100,000 and 200 body like this to, to do identification. I know it's, and we, we don't have dental records. It's really a, a very difficult problem. We start to think uh, about the disaster itself and uh, this is the driving what we do before. 
looking to the open disasters and closed disaster definition and see uh, if we'd like to go uh, for people to help us in identification and we start to make a, a kind of community share and we find this initiative it calls missing this initiative is very good it's deal with the community now they have a big platform in the facebook any missing person then the information to them and they put it in the facebook with the photos with everything and this is uh, lead us to an idea that we can deal with this in a kind of doing a kind of protocol and it's very challenging because uh, if we go with the standard protocol that we know, it's very difficult and it's not easy to find people, especially with the lack of that dental records. So we're going to use, we're starting to use two forms, ICRC missing person form and ICRC dead body identification form to take some information. And the challenge that we have, we, we, we make, uh, we look at the clauses and a special feature of unidentified body when it comes to the mortuary, if it's if, if the face is not uh, clear and it's the integrity is uh, is lost, so we look to the clauses, we look to the special feature, we uh, we, mean, we we write it in our form, and then we ask uh, we take some photos for the dental morphological feature from three sides, from the front and the, from the two lateral sides, and we keep it, and then also we look to the family part uh, then, and uh, missing initiative help us with this to communicate with the families for the anti-mortem form. And we look then to the disaster if it's a, a, a close or open disaster, close disaster with known people in a close place. We're trying to find some unique feature to get positive identification or lead us to doing DNA on an open disaster. We are going uh, straightforward for DNA. Uh, this uh, model was, when it started, it's very difficult for us uh, to put it in the right way, but uh, we have some experience with open disaster from the first case that we have in, in 2019. We have uh, this body who come from the Nile uh, and we, the, the feature is he's already decomposed and we just found uh, this training and we just find this uh, unique shape. So we shared it, we share it with missing initiative and they look to the Facebook uh, looking for something that might look like that for the missing person who sent the information and the photos of their sons. And we found this photo of some of the young uh, people here and we found the same one uh, we are not that sure, but we look at this line, this blue line, and we found this blue line also here. So it gives us a, a link that this person might be uh, this man, this young man. Then we go to look to the photos. Most of these photos are from the social media, and uh, sometimes it's sending from the families through Facebook or from the accounts of those people. And we start to look at the T's and trying to find any kind of links that we can that, that we can use in this identification process. And uh, here, for example, we look at uh, this area between uh, the lateral and the canine, and we look at this triangle. It's, it's, it's weird for us, it's very difficult, but we need something to connect with. No data, no dental records. We just need to create a kind of connection that make us tell the DNA lab to do the DNA. It's very expensive. It's not easy to just tell them, just do the DNA. We need to, to, to uh, breathe the gap first and make them uh, make it easier to give them a, a body with a family that they can doing uh, this kind of identification. We look to other many photos. And also we look on the other side at that this triangle here between the, lateral, the right lateral incisor and the canine and we see the shape and we can see that it might be a kind of similarity. And then we get more photos here also. Uh, we found that uh, here also between the lateral and the canine, uh, all the same triangle here. So we, after we do this, looking for all these morphological pattern that might be the same, then we have, uh, 
we, we have a justification to ask them for doing the DNA test and it, will, and it was positive for that guy, for, for that one. We get interested to these things again with missing. We, they start to share the photos and from this photo, we recognize something different here. We recognize that at the right side and the lateral and the canine, there is a kind of, uh, uh, you know, like, like a gap or something that we can notice, we look also, we ask for more photos and we can see uh, literally uh, here in this teeth, we found this chipping here and we look to the body that we have, we take some notes and we found somebody who might be the same. And then dealing with the family again, we ask them uh, through missing initiative about what he dressed, the last thing that he dressed and we found some similarity and also we, we try to, to get more photos and more confidence that we can send this case for DNA. And we, uh, for the lower Joe, we found these gaps and we do a kind of interview with the family, asking them if they can remember something in the mouth of their son. Uh, and it, 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 it go uh, at the same. Uh, line with it. So after the interview, we asked uh, the police to do DNA and also we get another positive results. Uh, this case number three, it's a recent case. I can't talk about this. It's the, the case is still open, but uh, the problem that we have, it's the f because it make the change because the community, uh, the community now uh, start to understand what we are doing. And it's very difficult to find yourself in the newspaper. But uh, at the same time, this thing with, the, with this media uh, giving us positive and negative results that we can share, but we also following the same procedure of them, closes and after the closes, uh, comparing the morphological feature and then send him to DNA. And the closes asters, it might be difficult. I, 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 I shared these photos before in the Sela factory disaster at the start of December, because we know that there are uh, 30 people uh, dead in a, in a lab, and the, we have the names of them, we have the nationalities of them, uh, and it, it was uh, some of them uh, had with the friends, we can get some, inform some, some information from the friends and from the forensic evidence. For example, from this body, we found a telephone number, we found uh, without the telephones, uh, some data, they check the, uh, the telephone SIM card and they know that it might be belong to this person. And uh, that was not enough for us, but we ask for more photos. And also we take this photo from the Facebook and we notice this center inside here, which is very unique to have it. And when we do the autopsy, uh, we can recognize it very well. And uh, when we come to the comparison with the photos, we, take, we took these three points and this unique feature, and uh, we check all the other 30 cadaver, 30 bodies that inside the mortuary, and no, no one of them had the same feature. It gives us a positive, uh, uh, a positive uh, result that we can declare our uh, to, to declare a positive result for that and we give uh, an identification positive results using these unique features for this person. Also, we found like a ring in one in the forensic evidence. And when we come to the body with the ring here, we did, uh, we look at some photos in the internet and we found that ring in this, in this man. And uh, we just uh, look at his teeth. And luckily also we found uh, a kind of anomalies in his center size kind of meso dance uh, here in this place, and also after we check uh, the whole cadavers, the whole bodies, no one else have such kind of feature. And for us, it was uh, uh, enough to to make or to declare positive identification for him. Uh, case number three for this one, uh, with this, uh, when the from the photos, we know the name because uh, all the names are known. We we, we recognize these T's with this. Uh, recognized shape and, and, and discoloration and, uh, um, and uh, these alignments. So when we start the comparison, it's very easy for us to find uh, this is the body, uh, the band body, and this is the picture to find this kind of similarity in the morphology. And we checked 
no other body of the bodies have such kind of morphology and uh, as such kind of close disaster it give us a chance to say positive identification what we try to do is 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 we just want to solve uh, the problem that we really have uh, here in this country because lacking of dental records and trying to have dental records with this huge number of missing persons families need to find uh, their people uh, one of the good outcomes that have been uh, this we have been as a forensic odontology team had been adopted by the attorney general office uh, we start to increase the community awareness such that they found that we have we find I think we have some network issue with uh, Dr. Khaled. It's just a kind of problem with the electric current. I'm so sorry, but outcome, the media exposure can create a kind of positive and negative uh, impact. People uh, from different sides look at the situation. Uh, some support it, some not. Some still don't understand the concept of identification. And but the good thing, we got a good relation with the forensic evidence department, and now we have a good connection. We still have limitation, like forensic medicine department. Uh, is still we are uh, in a clash with them. We are going. We, we would like to settle that to peace somehow. And also uh, resources uh, needed to build up a computer system for that, or even conduct researches and get uh, more human resources. Uh, to work on this, uh, religious communities are a problem that uh, if even you put a cadaver in a temporary storage for identification, uh, some of them are claimed that they need the bodies to be uh, buried. Uh, we still suffer from that. Uh, as a, uh, Also, uh, the lack of dental record, it's still a big problem that we need to go for. Uh, as a conclusion, what we have do in such kind of thing, we start with unidentified body. This is the protocol we think about. If they, there is integrity of the face, we don't need to go for anything. We just go for forensic evidence department because it could be recognized. If it's decomposed, it's scrutinized, pain, whatever, there is a lost integrity of the face. We are going to find, to take the information from them about the clothes, the unique feature, and take notes in our forms. Uh, and then take the photos of the T's and take the notes. Uh, if it's a close disaster, we also go to family interview uh, through missing initiative to give us some of information that can use in comparison and identification. If it's an open disaster, we go to comparison with outcome of the fam from families and we put also the notes and we make the comparison as a team. Uh, usually when we get any positive or any link in open disaster, we send uh, the body for, uh, for DNA uh, to give the final confirmation. And uh, in, in, in the other side, in the closed disaster, especially if we know the number and we know the people, if we get any unique feature, we go forward for, uh, for confirmation. Uh, I thank you very much for, for your attention. I'm sorry for this kind of technical problem. Uh, and I hope that uh, in, in spite of this, I, we can we can find a way to send a message to you, and it really represents the current situation that we face here in Sudan uh, regarding the identification process. And still, we are uh, working and digging in the ground that we can enhance enhance the system to have dental record system uh, and to press on the authorities to 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 give uh, a more space for forensic odontology and identification process it's not the dna there are uh, it's the teeth that we can use and at least we use this this protocol that we adopted here just to help us to 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 make us help those families whom are waiting for their beloved missing persons and uh, we just to do a, a, a little piece of light that can help uh, to get some results actually uh, we start the work uh, with 88 uh, body till now. We can make uh, a positive identification till now for eight, and we have 13 on the process. I'm very happy of these results. Uh, we need to do the to use the DNAs, uh, the DNA for seven of them, and this only on one of them. But this is good also that we can create a link between that unidentified body in that fridge or in that uh, refrigerator 
uh, with some family that lost her uh, beloved person for a while. Thank you very much.